does your character feel lifeless? Do you want to use tile sets to animate your protagonist? Or do you want your 2D platformer to have animations? So let me help you with that using Unity 2D sprite animations and the animator window as well. Down in the description you can find the links for the Unity package to follow along with the tutorial. Let's begin. Once you have installed the Unity package from the links down below, you will now need to make sure that inside your package manager you have installed the next thing. So window, package manager and inside packages Unity registry, make sure that you have installed 2D sprite and 2D timemap editor and inside one bin that you have created, in this case is character textures and you will see that inside this project you have already the idle tile sheet but in this case inside the extra files that I upload inside the links down below you will find other tile sheets in this case we have the jump animation and the walking animation and let's just click and drag these files inside our bin once this is imported you will see that this is not imported correctly but that's because this texture type is default right now so let's click both and the texture type should be sprite 2d and ui and also these sprites are 16 by 16 so the pixel per unit will be 16 and the sprite mode will be multiple because we are using tile sheets also you need to make sure that the filter mode is point no filter and let's apply it and once you applied it you will see that for example let's click the jump tile sheet and let's open the sprite editor you will see that most of the colors are not displayed correctly that's because the compression is doing his magic but in this case these are pixel art so let's close this thing let's go down here you will find the compression and you will click on none compression let's apply it let's see the sprite editor and you will see that it is displayed correctly let's do it again for the walking animation none apply let's open up and it is displayed correctly now in this case when you are using a tile sheet you need to go to the inspector sprite editor you need to slice it into parts so in this case let's go to slice we will click on the type of slice grid by cell size because we know our cell size in this case is 16 by 16 and let's just click on the slice and it will automatically do it in this case we have jump 0, jump 1, jump 2, jump 3 and all the others. Let's now apply it. And now as you can see we have all the parts of the animation. And now let's do it again for the walking animation sprite editor. Let's go to slice, grid by cell size, 16 by 16 and slice. Apply. Nice. You already have all your animations but if you play the game your character doesn't have any animations that's because we now need to open our window of animation and animator so let's go to window animation animation let's put it right here and as well we will need the animator window so window animation animator now let's put the project right here so we'll be able to click and drag most of the slices and let's click on our player and once you click on your player you will see that you can create an animation clip so let's create it now let's go to our assets bin let's create a new bin in this case will be animations and this animation will be named idle for the idle animation let's save it and once you do it 
your player will automatically have an animator and inside your idle you have a new timeline where you will drag all your sprites so in this case let's go to our idle tie sheet let's click the first holding shift let's click the last one and let's drag them up and if you play it out you will see that it's being displayed but it is too fast so in this case what it works to me is to give them a 5 millisecond space so the first one will be in 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 and 30 let's play it again and as you can see that's nice and if you play the game the character will have the animation nice now we need to do it again but with the other animations so let's go click right here create new clip in this case we want to create a new clip for them walking animation so let's call it walking and for the walking animation let's do it again as I told you let's click and drag these tile sets so let's click the walking zero hold shift walking for and let's click and drag them and as you can see if you play it again we have the animation but it is too fast in this case what it works to me is to give them a 10 by 10 space okay this is too slow so let's make it again with a space of 5 this is working nice but if you play the game you will see that the walking animation is not being displayed even though you are walking that's why we need an animator in this case the animator will help us to use states to know if we are walking if we are jumping or doing whatever you want to in this case we have the idle animation and the walking animation and we need to make a transition so let's right click make transition and let's make the transition from idle to walking and from walking let's make another transition to idle now inside the transition from the idle animation to the walking animation we need to make sure in this case because we are using sprites we don't need a transition so let's click on has exit time fix duration and the transition duration let's cl click in on zero and the same goes for the walking to idle transition and now we need to make sure that we have a condition in order to activate the idle animation or the walking animation in this case we need to use parameters and they are right here so parameters and let's create a new parameter in this case we have float int bool and triggers in this case for the walking animation we will use a boolean it will be named walking and if walking equals true then the walking animation will be displayed so let's go to our transition let's go to our condition list and let's add a new condition in this case will be walking equals true and for the walking to idle transition let's do it again but in this case the walking boolean will be false now let's go to our game and if we play it you will see that we are not calling for these booleans that's because we need now to change a bit of the code in order to use the parameters inside our animator so let's pause it let's go to our player let's go inside our player script so up here you will see that inside our sprite and an animation header we need to call the animator so let's go to public animator animator 
This is in order to use the animator parameters. And down here inside our update method, we will have both the jumping balls and the walking. So in this case, if we want to check if we are moving, first we need to go in this case we have an if statement that tells us if the player is going right or left in case if we want to flip the player so we will use this if statement in order to check if the player is walking so let's make a new else statement right here and this will tell us if the player is not walking so let's go and call the animator dot set bool in this case this is a boolean that's why it is called set bool but if you are using for example the trigger we'll call the set trigger or if you are using the integer set integer and as well for the set float but as you know we are using a boolean parameter and inside the parentheses you have to call the name of the parameter so walking and the boolean value will be false because we are not walking and in the case of both direction x is greater than zero and direction x is less than zero we will use the same code but instead of false we will call true because we are walking let's save it up and try it out and before we play this game let's make sure that we call the animator inside our player script so right here inside our player animator let's click and drag it inside the animator and let's play it out and we have the idle animation if in if we start walking it starts the walking animation nice but now if we jump we need to call for the jumping animation so let's pause it and let's create first the animation of the jumping tile sheet. So let's go to our character textures where we have all our animations and let's click on our player again and inside here you will have the idle animation and the walking animation but let's create a new clip and in this case we want to call it jumping. Save it and as we did before let's open up the jump tile sheet and let's click on the first one and hold shift click on the last one let's click and drag and in this case let's play it it is already doing its magic but in this case we want an animation that uses a space of three and if you play it, you will see that it is already being displaced nicely. But this animation, or the way I did it, is to make sure that once it hits the last frame, it will stop. In order to cancel the looping of this animation, you need to go to your animations, jumping, and inside the inspector, let's deactivate the loop time. Now let's go to our player animator and the animator window you will see that you already have a new animation clip in this case the jumping animation and I put it right here and you can jump from each animation so for example you have idle and walking so let's make the transition right click jumping and the walking transition to jumping and in this case for this project if you come from the jumping animation the first thing you will see is the idle animation so let's make the transition just for the jumping to idle that works to me so let's now make sure as well 
all these transitions as will have no exit time, will have no fixed direction and the transition will be equal zero. And now we need a new parameter, in this case a new boolean that will tell us if we are jumping. So let's name it jumping and if this equals true for each transition from walking and idle to jumping we'll have the condition of if the jumping value equals true then we are jumping as easy as that so jumping equals true for both the transition from idle and walking to jumping and in this case for the jumping to idle transition let's make sure that we have jumping equals false now as well let's go to our scene let's click on our player let's go to our player script and we already have the animator so in this case we need to use the if statement of jumping or if the player is on the ground to tell if we are jumping or the jumping animation needs to be stopped so if jumping let's call the animator dot set bool let's call the jumping parameter and the value will be true for the for this statement and in the case we hit the ground the jumping animation will be false let's save it up let's try it out and if you walk you have the walking animation and if you jump and you keep the bottom you will see that we have the last frame as I told you and that's all for today Hope this tutorial was useful for you. Any comments, any questions down in the comment section. I upload videos every two weeks on Saturdays. I love you all with all my heart. God bless and happy game dev.